Here we go, walking into Te Hoko Bitu Atu. Where? Yeah. What's that? Oh, no, they got a reunion going on. Hi. Oh, I don't know Hold it, because I'm going to get it. Here, hold it. Go. 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 It's the dog. Hey, Sean, I'm not even ready. Oh, I'm not even ready. I'm not even Oh, we should have changed that into two, two dollars. Why did he start towards him? Why didn't he like, make it hard? Because he won't even find it. I don't have any. It's all card. Here. <laughs> oh, is there a tour? Like, yeah. There's translated the uprising war party of the chief Wahiao. This is the southern boundaries to Lake Rotorua. So whenever the enemy arrived unannounced, the chief Wahiao gathered his war party. Four to five hundred warriors performing the haka and with the men stamping their feet on the ground, not only did it sound like it was rumbling, but the dust rose like the steam. And that's how the village got its name. Now approximately 25 families reside in the village, so we've shortened the name to, 35, uh, to 13 letters, Whakarewarewa. We've even cut it down to 5 letters, Waka, much easier, easier for our visitors to pronounce. Now, um, now I'm going to be showing you how those families that live in the village utilise the resources. If you have questions, my name is Paula. Paula. Now, just to get an idea, we're living on top of fault lines coming from New Zealand's most active volcano, Whakari, White Island, 85 kilometres east of us. And running from that island are the fault lines right through the valley all the way to Lake Taupo, what is known as the, what is known as the Taupo Volcanic Zone. Now, after they surveyed the fault lines from White Island to Lake Taupo, they estimated over 1,500 active geysers, just in the valley alone, up to 35. So you can only imagine what the valley was like. Now the temperatures of our pools, from boiling point, 100 degrees Celsius to 12 Fahrenheit. They remain at those temperatures consistently, don't go putting fingers in the steam vents. Oh, the wedding party. <laughs> You're having family getting married, folks. Oh. <laughs> Save the work, I don't get paid to go. <laughs> now, the original archway stands at our local school, Whakarewarewa. Where the profiles are located, there's a photo of the original archway on one of those profiles. Now in replacement, the War Memorial Archway, commemorating the men of our village who served in World War I, as well as the fathers and sons who served in World War II. Now of course the inscription of Pihoko Fitua II, in acknowledgement of a guardian, two. We acknowledge Tu Matauinga, the guardian of war. On the other side, our inscriptors Kia Mo Mahara, lest we forget. Talking about the men of the village listed under the archway. The bridge 
we're going to cross, this is the fourth bridge to be built in the village. Before the building of the bridges, my ancestors carried the visitors across stepping stones. I should be thankful for the bridges there. Now the stream that flows below the bridge, their Puaringa, floating blossom, it's the sulphur deposits that run into the river, coming down the river, floating like blossoms. The river's cold, there's nothing warm about the river. Oh. That's how our grandfather's listed here became known as penny divers. After, before the building of the bridges, when my ancestors carried the visitors across stepping stones for a penny. After the building of the first bridge in 1885, the visitors saw the children swimming in the river and started tossing coins to them. And that's how they became known as penny divers. <laughs> my generation, the currency, one cent, two cent, five cent coins. Like the penny, non-existent, inflation has increased dramatically. The gold coins were notes when I was a diver. If they change the five dollar note into a coin, I will return back to you. <laughs> <laughs> now, Now we're like in the village to our home, we walk through the front entrance, the roadway, the corridor, houses, the rooms, two bathing areas, one is private, located on this side of the village, we call Hirere, one big bath, they can bathe up to 40 people at one time. The water that channels into the bath, on your map. This is our hot lake, Te Roto Atama Eke. At this present moment, the temperature of the lake between 32 to 38 degrees Celsius. With the hot water channeling through our pipe into the bath, it's a deep bath. You can sit under that pipe, massaging your head, neck, shoulders, back. Then we'll make our way to the communal bathing area, just in front of you, the kitchen, and where the carved house is located in the village, the living room. <laughs> now, to continue along. Take in those wondrous smells. We do every day. Now according to the according to the scientists, one of many areas throughout the city that's highly concentrated in the hydrosulfate, where McDonald's is located. <laughs> now the only time the city gets to smell the sulphur when we have cloud cover. It traps it. When the clouds oh, okay. disappear, it evaporates into the atmosphere. Now the houses in the village are on solid rock, everywhere else thermal, that's why local authorities won't allow redevelopment in the village. If those families rebuilt, they could wake up finding a hot pool or spring sitting in their house, mm. like this one. There's a hot pool to one side, two behind it, one underneath it. Oh. 2006 when the family had to move out of the house. Mm. So Mother Nature makes the changes we adapt. Because where we're standing, one still houses. You can see that. Now we're going to move into the main area of the village, we call Rahui, the reserve, where the families do the communal cooking and bathing. Mm -hmm. We do not draw thermal into the homes, not even for the heating. Now, let's continue in this direction. Now with our cruise ship season starting to kick in, we only allow the children from the village on the river. We don't allow the other children from the city on the river. So some of our children can make up to about $100 in the first half of the day, especially when the cruise ships are coming through. Wow. Well, they don't keep the money, they've got to hand it to their grandparents. Yes, I am. Because as we know, children are involved in curriculums when they go back to school and they always come at a cost. <laughs> so that's what the money's used That's true. Kids take note. <laughs> they even pay for their trip to Spain. Whoa. Well, before the uh, high school competitions, they decided to do all their practice and dress rehearsals in Spain and Portugal. <laughs> and so when they got back, they timed it just right for the, the, the high school competitions, and then they took it out the title. Wow! That's amazing. Um. You can actually feel the spray of the geysers. Oh. It's actually lightly touching you. Yeah, so that's the geysers. The wind's carrying the, the, the spray right across. Oh, I thought that was rain. Now, we do have pockets of sulfuric pools. They become sulfuric once the temperatures drop below 100 degrees Celsius. Bacteria starts to form. So to compare us to the world's biggest sulfur reserve, Yellowstone Park, 
that's why it's a wilderness, because the majority of their pools are sulfuric, where the majority of our pools are alkaline. If they were sulfuric, this would be a valley. We would not live here. Where the families cook their meals. Even though the homes have kitchens, bathrooms, they prefer to utilise the resources. A frozen chicken from frozen to cook one hour. So you can put 